What's up everybody, my name is Kason. Welcome back to the WDL. This is the season three, week seven video for the Heinler division. And we've got a bunch of best of threes for you guys today. That should be a lot of fun. Before we jump into the matches and talk about the standings though, I just wanted to mention a couple of brief things in terms of the videos on when you can expect them for this division. First of all, this week for week seven, I'm going to be placing one video per day, I think, instead of doing two per day, just on uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Normally I do the two per day Day schedule for Tuesday Wednesday so that all of the videos are basically done in time by the time our week of actual games start for the players this week is gonna be a little different because we are actually taking a week off next week there will be no uh, regular footage videos of the WDL that comes off I'm gonna be going on vacation and I think a lot of the players kind of need a little break just for one week from the league so there will be one week off and then we will come back the following week in week eight so two weeks from when you're watching this video is when those videos will come out next week i do plan on making a video ahead of time and releasing just there so there's something for you guys to watch that i think i'm just going to talk a little bit about the playoff structure and how that works this season because it's a little bit different than the first couple of seasons and i just want everybody to understand how that works and uh, hopefully it should be kind of interesting so that is kind of my plan that being said these are how the standings are for heinler going into week seven in first place we've got jb79 coach of the paranoid androids not as not only has he not dropped a single series he hasn't dropped a single game yet he's got a plus two win loss or plus 12 win loss excuse me it's absolutely crazy 18 points he's crushing it uh in second place we have turnbar coach of the fire ferrets and unhindered coach of ignite the storm in third both with 13 points so they are tied head to head right now uh but turnbar won that matchup when they played against each other so he does have the tiebreaker as it stands Crimson Lease of the Triumphant Trailblazers started the season off 0-2 on a absolute tear though, winning four straight weeks. Can he pull a Sand Rooster of last season? Sand Rooster started out the season 0-2 um, against the top two teams and then won seven straight. Crimson Lease, can he do that? We'll have to see. Maverick of Spaghetti Western with 10 points. So currently, if the season ended now, these would be our playoff teams. But obviously, we've got three more weeks of matches, including this video. Spike of Bebop's crew, if he has anything to say about it, has nine points. So currently only one out of the playoffs. However, he plays against JB79 this week, so that's going to be a tall task. Lucian Rams of Lone Shadow with seven points, and Colgate of Friendship also with seven. So not too far out of it. They're not out of it yet, but they're going to have to put some wins on the board to have a chance to make the playoffs. Same with Desire of Team Big Mouth, who is on a two-week win streak. Can he make it three? We'll have to find out. Error 404 of Ashes to Crash is currently in last. Don't think he will be making the playoffs, but regardless... Hopefully he can play some spoiler and have some good matches. So I'm excited to get into these guys. Let's check it out. Heading into game number one of the Fire Ferrets, coached by Turnbar versus Lone Shadow, coached by Lucian Rams. Turnbar going with the old reliable strike composition as Resist Magic comes out from the Edward Elric alongside his brother and Mariluk. Focus Fist going to get Protect up on her and Alphonse. And here comes... The man I just talked about, Uzumi Stance comes out, the physical shield and defense piercing rate, and Lucian Rams is running a very interesting team here, and I'm thinking, where is the damage? Heart of Flutter comes out from the Dario alongside another tank and a healer. I am starting to wonder, is, is Lucian's Rams' strategy to literally just outlast the opponent and win on turns? Because I don't know how you're going to get through this Alphonse. Guard Haste comes out from Ayaka onto the Mont Leonis here. Auto Mills Crux comes out from Edward, so he's ready to go. He's ready to dispel a bunch of stuff. He's got AP. He doesn't really need much else. Caleb's probably going to come out from the Mont, so get some CT up and just move forward a little bit. Mara looks just going to refresh some of these same buffs, but she's got tons of AP at this moment. An expertise of the alchemist comes out from Alphonse, so he is very, very tanky here. I'm curious to see how much damage this Dario can do on this next turn. Ayaka's going to start channeling a spell. I imagine this is another haste. Aroga Blade Life Friend does 1400. Honestly, that's more than I expected it to do. Uh, and this comes down to the thing I just said before. Fangs of Leonis dealing 272. The Disable does not land. How are you going to kill this team? I think the strategy is to win on turns. Now, this is going to be very telling. How much does Edward do? 5,400. I will say, I don't think that broke Dario's defense. Might be running um, some defense debuff resist trust stones or something like that to make sure it doesn't get broken. But whatever the odds of that happening are, he doesn't get it broken, so it doesn't do as much damage. But he still takes a good chunk. Boulder blockade hitting both units tanked up very well. 
man, this is interesting. Can they actually tank up this strike team? If they're if they can, there's probably not any healing that will come out from Turnbar's side. Merlu can go for Chakra, but more likely than not, she would probably go for a standard attack before doing that. 31 actions left, but Adamantine Pillar Transformation does 10k to the Dario, and I think that quickly answers the question of can this team tank this up? I expect Merluk to be able to chain up with this very nicely. Surge Strike with 11k onto the Mont. Oh, good lord. Here comes Dario with 69, a very nice amount of AP, and he's got some more hate as well, but he's not going to be able to do enough damage to these other units. Angelic Grace will come out from the Ayaka to top him up. But you have to think that this game one is over. How are they possibly ever going to get through this Alphonse? Oh my goodness. Adamantine Pillar does another 8,400 from the Edward. That little tiny man does not hit like one. He is an absolute beast. He might be short, but he packs a punch. And here comes Mariluk to follow up. A standard attack for a crit, 5,500. She is a very crit-focused unit in her kit, if you guys don't know. And here comes the spell from Ayaka. Resist magic is going to come out from Edward, so he apparently cannot hit the Ayaka here. Not sure if Alphonse can clean this up. Focus Fist, barely not enough to finish the kill here onto the Ayaka. So she's going to heal herself, but it's just a cure. Mariluk's going to surge strike and finish her off. Mariluk kind of popping off in that game, not going to lie. But that is a game one victory for the Fire Ferrets. Game number two here, guys, and it looks like both teams opting for a switch up. Turnbar going with a couple of wind units, and this is all wind power. A shell is here to just haste and quicken the other side, it looks like. Resist magic again coming out from the Edwards, so Turnbar definitely expecting magic threats coming out from Lucian Ram's side, and here they are. This is a Terra, Renan, and Lorenzo composition. Very interesting to see here as Sharpshooting Stance comes out from the Lucia. This is her main buff to get online, really allows her to have very high penetration levels against the other side and Renan should be channeling his own barrier so he should have a three hit barrier uh, I will say Lucia does not do fantastically against that especially on a map like this with height range issues because really your only way of getting through it is quadruple shot however Edward Elric does a very good job against barriers as Wallbreaker just destroys them so we'll have to see how this plays out zombie TMR coming up from the Renan though Halloween Ryru's TMR, an old classic, has been in the meta for years at this point. As the channel comes out from Shell, will this be another haste, or will it be a quicken onto Edward? We'll have to find out here. Also, Edward has his Auto Mills Crux online, so he's ready to go. And here is the Quicken Edward. We've seen this from Sand Rooster's team a number of times be very effective. What can he go for here? Full Metal Rage onto the Renan. Does it break the defense? And didn't Andario last game 3,000? I don't think I saw the defense down here. I think this is a very smart strategy from Lucian Rams. Is there defense debuff resist on the other side? Unless I'm missing it, I don't see the defense break here. So here comes Terra catching the Guard Haste. And Shell going to follow up here with another Quicken. And I'm looking at the turn order. As long as Edward doesn't die here, which we'll have to see how much damage that Terra can do. If Edward doesn't die to these next two hits, it's going to be trouble for Lucian's Rams team. As 4200 comes out from the Terra, because he's going to get to go. And then Lucia into another Quicken. But here comes Renan. Can he take out the Time Mage in one hit? If he does, this could be absolutely massive for Lucian Rams' lone shadow. 4100 and not enough to kill her, though. I imagine some AoE res there. As here comes Edward Wallbreaker, one shots the Lorenzo. Poor guy didn't really get to do much of anything in this fight. Here comes Lucia. She's going to start channeling a spell. I imagine this is a mega charge to drop unit attack resist. The Quickens coming off from the Edward. Full Metal Fist does 8200, which will proc the Courage from Terra. And here comes Lucia. I expect this to do a lot. 5130 is a really good chunk. Renan does have the Ruby Ray, so he'll come back to life. And here comes Shell. She's going to start channeling a spell onto the Edward. Lucia's going to get to go even before this here. And what does Terra have in store? She's going to fire Raga Slash, so it'll kill the Time Mage. But is it too little too late? What can Lucia find here? She finds a split shot, an absolutely insane angle, and 8,400 damage onto the Renan. Good lord, Lucia eating her Wheaties this morning. And that is a 2-0 victory for the Fire Ferrets. GG. We've got the Triumphant Trailblazers coached by Crimson Lease versus Ignite the Storm. 
coached by Unhindered, and it looks like a Lightning Squad on both sides of the map here, with Lightning from FF13, Charlotte, and Lilith versus Frederica, Cloud, and Little Leela. These are my kind of teams as a Lightning player. A trap wall coming up from the Charlotte, trying to gather some hate up right out of the gate here. There's going to be no Dispel on the other side, so she will be able to hold quite a bit of hate for the entire fight. Revitalize coming up from Frederica as Soldiers Honor coming up from the Cloud to try and make sure they have plenty of AP, and the Keen Blade from Lilith is here to make sure that Charlotte can walk forward very well. Glorious Armor comes out, so Charlotte is ready to tank up some damage. I will say Cloud can probably still eat her through her fairly effectively if he was able to get into close range. I do wonder on this map if he has Ranger sub job on though for barrages and things like that as there's tons of different height ranges here. Divine Virtue coming out from the Lilith and this is that pursuit buff that comes out from Lightning. It's very very important for her to get this online so she is ready to go. Frederica out of buffs. She's just going to gather some AP and walk forward and the Inherited Tyranny, the Old Doa TMR coming out, so Cloud, I'm sure, has over 100 in defense penetration at this moment with tons of AP regeneration. And Charlotte, I believe, went for Swift Punishment, getting some chunks onto the Little Leela. Uh, and Lightning is going to buff and walk forward. Same with Lilith Hazard form, so her attack is quite high at this moment. But what is Frederica going to do? She should be able to find a barrage or something here. 5,400 onto the Lilith is very good. Does not one-shot her, but honestly pretty close. Reflexed by the Lilith here, though. You do wonder if Silencing Spell would have killed her here. Not entirely sure what her slash resistance is like. Pummel will start a nice little lightning chain from the Charlotte onto Little Leela, but Sharpshoot from Cloud does about 3,100, so that answers our question. It does uh, mean that the Ranger sub job is online for Cloud, but Scourge does about 6K, and the follow-up from Lightning will kill the tank, and all of a sudden, this looks very, very good for Crimson Lease, I think. AP Devastator takes 40 AP away from Cloud, as well as a bunch of damage, and that is very, very cool to see from a unit we do not see barely ever in Lilith, but Lightning looks to be a little too fast here. Maybe some affinity bonuses of being next to Charlotte helping out here, but she's going to lap Cloud, I believe. Dispel Spread comes out. It is a ton of damage. The follow-up almost kills Cloud. It also kills Frederica, and now Cloud is in a 1v3, and he's got Reflex in his kit, so it's not technically over, but he's got a massive uphill battle here, and Barrage is just not going to do it. It's not going to cut it, not going to get a kill. Lilith will seal the deal here, deal here with a Paralyzing Edge, and that is a Game 1 victory for the Triumphant Trailblazers. Game 2 here, we've got Triumphant Trailblazers rocking a Reagan, Uni, and Charlotte composition. So something we haven't seen come out from them before. We've seen a lot of Reagan, but not this team comp specifically. One team we have seen a ton of times, though, from Unhindered side is this Double Glove Synergy along with Little Leela as the tank. Leave this to me coming out from the reg and getting some different elemental resists as well, some AoE res. Looks like more the merrier is going to start channeling a spell. This tells me that this should be Time Mage sub. It's either a haste or a quicken. I don't even remember if she has. Yes, she does have haste. I know that she has uh, quicken, or at least I'm 99% sure of that. Heart of Flutter comes out from the Little Leela, so this is the Sweetheart of Deer TMR. We've seen this many, many times. Super good on tanks, as Fuel to the Fire from Roy will get him ready to go to deal some damage. And I assume this is another haste coming out from more than Mirror. Will it be on herself or is it on Roy? Not entirely sure who was in that slot two or slot one spot for the team. Looks like Reagan now has his courage online though. So he's ready to deal a ton of damage. And I will say Reagan with the elemental advantage over more, but not against Roy. Should be interesting to see here. Shadow Flare comes out from the Little Leela. So has that Black Rose Helena sub VC in there probably somewhere as Aerofall is going to hit the entire team but that's going to nullify haste and Uni is all of a sudden looking like a massive counter to this time mage sub from more but almost 6k from the Meridian channel is a very good start can Roy follow up on this and land a kill all consuming flare is 6k that is enough to kill the Charlotte and it's looking pretty good for unhindered here store comes out from the Reagan though so his next attack is going to hit like an absolute truck but here's more the merrier can she find damage on him yes she can divine talk Toxicology does a ton to the uni, but very little to the ray, and I'm actually shocked at how well he soaked that. All-consuming flare, though, not soaking that very well. He does self-heal, so he is full at this moment, but unhindered side, the entire team is looking to try and close out this Reagan. but more than merrier, can she survive a hit from this ice 
wow that is a ton of damage mountain dive comes out double kill a good chunk on the roy as well and now the question is can he one shot 9703 it is barely not enough to kill him and reagan i think has the damage here surge strike crits for 3900 which is just barely enough to kill roy oh my god and reagan pulls off the 1v3 turnaround gg and congratulations to crimson lease Game number one, you guys, of JB79, Coach of the Paranoid Androids versus Spike, Coach of Bebop's crew. And it looks like JB79 is running Earth into the Earth player, Spike. And it looks like Queen's Edict coming out from Queen Mashri here as she is alongside Yurel and Mariel. So the AoE buff comes out from Yurel. She's ready to go. And what does Mariel have for us? It's Invitation to Despair. Bravery down on the attack. I think this is the Dialdo TMR. I know this is one of the new Crystal Warriors. Call of the Wild comes out from Astria. Says this is a double water composition coming out from Spike along with Murmur to try and tank up some damage and maybe even heal the party. Fast Cast comes out from Miranda. Does Murmur go for something similar? No, it's actually the Black Rose Helena TMR. So getting some agility up in the three hit barrier on herself as deep fortification comes out from Astrius. He now has his HP absorb and all that good stuff. So we'll have to see here. So Queen Mashri is going to start channeling a spell. This should be her re-raise. I don't really think she has anything else to channel at this moment. Indomitable Stance comes out from Urel, so she's got courage. And here comes Mariel, going to try and space out from the other units. Be a very successful tank. Level 4 Banishka, though, does almost no damage to the Murmur. Does drop her bravery, but that really won't matter a whole lot. Here comes Mur the Miranda. Should be going for something like probably a Waterga which does have a sleep chance. Jamming Thrust does about 1,700 into the Mariel. Honestly, not too bad, considering. Does the and the sleep land on anybody? I think it actually landed a double sleep. Edge of No Return chains up from Astrius, and Queen Mashri is going to miss her turn. I don't even think she finished channeling her re-raise. That is brutal for JB79 here. Yurel's going to walk forward, but she cannot find damage here. Mariel does get woken up by the damage from Astrius, but she is chunked quite low. The Mind Crusher onto the Murmur. I expect that Murmur's probably running Bowtie here. Was not watching the movement, but I think she probably does have some hate. As here comes Astrius, going to go for the Limit Break, so Release the Void is going to give him his follow-up attack. And this is looking very, very good for Spike in game number one. 5,900 damage will proc the Crystal Tracer, but he doesn't even need it to find this first kill. Water is going to go off again for another 6k. And yeah, that re-raise never landed for Mashri. Jamming Thrust is 2390, and Yurel for JB is now in a 1v3. Fist of Perforation is going to deal a very good chunk of damage, but Miranda's going to heal a good chunk of it back. 98 AP. Can she find the Courage here? Dispelling Thrust will find it. Astrius is going to go next unless the CT up laps. It does not. Astrius should be able to find the kill here. And would you believe it? Spike wins game one against JB79, who was previously undefeated in every game this season. Congratulations and GG. Heading into game two, guys. And JB79's favorite and probably strongest team this season has been the double fire mage composition along with Mariel, but this has been his second most effective comp. Obviously, he doesn't want to run the fire into the water side of Spike, so that's very smart, but running the Winter Victoria, Perrine, and Mariel, we'll have to see if this works out any better for him. Saintly Wall is going to come out from Winter Victoria, so getting a physical barrier, that will certainly help against the Asterisk on the other side, as Jealous Wrath onto the Mariel, so switching up to the Vega TMR to try and proc some Berserks, probably from long range. I expect that JB79 is probably still running arithmetician sub to try and get some berserk on the party before getting too close into the fight grace of eternal friendship again onto the murmur here as raging waters from perrine so she's just getting all of those good buffs online trying to get ready to go here deep fortification onto the asterisk and the miranda and it looks like pretty much the same thing coming out from spike except opposite sides the the murmur is switched from where she was last time so the break spread dealing almost almost 3k from the winter victoria not bad considering that murmur actually can get Pretty crazy resistances, but Miranda, I think, can reach a water gut again. 3,600 damage. This time does not land the sleep. I expect that JB79 is probably running some sleep resistance runes this time. 
I don't think that he would get caught up by that again a second time. And Indomitability from the Astrius now, now though, so he is ready to go. He's got his Courage and all of the other buffs that he can basically ever summon. Kira from Murmur, though, is basically just going to nullify any damage that Victoria already did. She's going to go for Barrier Break Arrow, which is good chunks, but if she's only got 21 AP left, and will Murmur just sit back and heal this over and over? Banerska is going to go off for 246, but the Berserk does land. This means that Murmur cannot heal herself. This will be interesting here. So Spike has not been able to do a whole lot of damage. A little bit to Winter Victoria, but that's it. But Dispelling Thrust dispels all of those buffs and the haste onto Perrine. And that is pretty rough for JB here. What can Perrine follow up with, though? She's going to go Vortex Kick. A good chunk of damage onto Miranda, but honestly, Astria's tanked that up quite well. I expect a good chunk of AoE resist on him here as he's going to Limit Break. Try and find a good chunk of damage here. How much does it do? 5,700. Does the follow-up kill? Yes, it does. And oh my goodness, guys. Spike is looking very good here to try and win a Game 2 2-0 series over JB. Punishing Slow Arrow, though, kills Miranda. And Winter Victoria says not so fast. I will say, if Mariel can land a Berserk onto the Astrius, this might not be over yet. We'll have to see. Cross Destruction, though, is going to hit the Winter Victoria. Does the follow-up kill? 985, it does not. If Mariel can land a Berserk, JB79 can still pull this off, I think. The standard attack is going to hit Astrius. Can she Berserk him? Chicken Blade's going to come out, 2649. The Bravery is down, does not land the Berserk, though. I think she ne he needed that to try and win this game. Going to find the Unfailing Void Blade AoE. The follow-up attack is going to do 1845. Can Mariel possibly win this 1v1? She still has 71 AP left, and she was tanking damage fairly effectively. Chicken Blade's going to drop Bravery, 2290. I don't know if those Bravery down stack in PvP. I think they do. Bulwark Breach is a lot, though, and Crystal Tracer, not quite enough to kill. 2100 health. Can Mariel find the Courage here? She still has his Courage online. How much damage can she find? 53 height-based bandage procs the Courage. Astrius is going to go next, though, and I think he does 800 some damage 974 on the standard attack you've got to be kidding me and spike wins game two with one health remaining absolutely amazing series gg all right guys next series on deck we've got desires Team Big Mouth versus Error 404's Ashes to Crashes. Looks like Desire running a couple of win units with Resol, Winter, Luartha, and Severo. Interesting composition. It looks like Fire is on the other side with Yuffie, Heo, and I'm trying to see the other unit. It is a Balo. So this is the week before the 140 is coming out from Balo. Recording this on Monday as he is going to get those upgrades on Wednesday, but he does not have them yet. The Beast Resolve buff coming out from the Heo here on the entire party. And Yuffie is going to go next with the Aurora of Blessings. So expecting either some light or dark or dark attacks coming out from the side of Desire. So very, very interesting here. Obviously, maybe Desire calling that bluff. We'll have to see. Masterful Melody coming out from the Winter Luartha, though. Accuracy up on the party is a very good deck considering Yuffie is on the other side. Now, is Severo going for his Courage or is he able to find damage here? That is the question I'm asking myself as Words of Self-Preservation comes out. AP cost rate down, protect and shell, hopefully letting Resol live a hit or two as the late Keen Blade coming out from Balo is a very nice tech. Good positioning coming out from Error 404 as the King Bradley TMR again coming out from Heo. So he's hasted up, trying to uh, block any sort of pesky reaction blocks that will come out from the other side. And here's the Brumal form. This is what makes Yuffie Yuffie, that one hit shield, guaranteed hit nullification and even gains some Pierce Evade. So will Winter Luartha be able to even hit her? Binding Javelin is going to whiff. If you guys don't know, Brumal Form gives 25 Pierce Evade to Yuffie. So she is even dodgier to her specifically. Veiled Defiance coming up from the heel. Several going to go next. What does he have here? Can he find damage or does he go for a status effect onto Yuffie? Something like a Toad or a Sleep. We'll have to see. Goes for Water Gun on the entire team. It hits multiple units, dealing a very good chunk to the Balo. Also dropping Bravery on both of those backline units. But here comes Resol. Does she have the accuracy to hit? I don't see a dodge coming up from Yuffie, but it's hard to say. Here comes Edge of the Void. Very cool Limit Break. A unit that we don't get to see a ton in the meta here lands the blind on both of the fire units here and also got that one hit shield broken for yuffie 
So it did hit. It doesn't look like it did any damage, but it did hit. Burning Drive going to hit all three, though. Actually a little surprised he was still accurate enough to hit that, considering he's blinded. Resol can be a little bit dodgy, and here is the exact example of that, as Windstorm would have hit the entire party, but gets dodged by Resol no problem. And here is Severo. What does he go for here? Does he go for a status or a heal? Because I don't... Well, actually, he could be, be able to hit heal no problem. I take that back. I don't think he will be able to hit Yuffie. So I expect him to go for either a Jamming Thrust or a Water Gut on to the heal. Maybe a Flare. Flare would be the best option. I talked myself into that at the very end. 6,900 damage. Actually heals himself back up a little bit here. And Resol, can she find an AoE on the party? What does she go for? She's taking her time a little bit thinking about what she wants to do after this fight. Maybe she's got a hot date tonight. I don't know. Who knows? But uh, she's taking her sweet time. Don't worry, Desires uh, Resol. I got nothing to do right now. It's all good. Take your sweet time. If only I could, like, zoom in, you know, on different things during the fight. Can't think of anything specifically I'd want to do that on. Here comes Lies and Betrayal. It lands the kill onto Heo. Deals a good chunk of damage onto Yuffie as well. She needs to land one more hit, though. And does Yuffie have the capability of hitting this least? There's Resol. Apparently not. The Windstorm gets whipped again. Dodge because of that blind. That blind just looking so massive here. And here comes Resol. She should be able to clean this fight up here. She's been two for two on hitting Yuffie. Is she three for three here? I'll have to find out. Kiss of Damnation comes out, lands the kill onto Yuffie, and that is a game one victory for Desire. Heading into game number two here, and Desire's team Big Mouth is running back the same composition as last time. I say that, looks like Error 404 is doing the same thing as well here, so maybe trying to adjust maybe for the blind on the limit break. I think that was the biggest reason that Error 404 lost. Had there not been a blind, I think they probably would have won the fight, so maybe there will be some sort of adjustment there. Looks like Yuffie actually getting way further forward compared to last time. The Nighthawk immediately coming up from Desire, that actually did hit, but it procced the 100% shield from Yuffie here. So movement, positioning, definitely different coming out from the side of Error 404 here. Maybe trying to bait out the Resol. Looks like they have done it successfully. As Courage is now on to Balo, who apparently is running Bowtie. Looks like he only took two spaces of movement. Here comes Severo. Can he find damage on a Yuffie? I don't imagine he's accurate enough for this. So is this probably his Courage? We'll have to see. Vacuum Slash one-shots Balo. Good lord. Procs the Courage right out of the gate. 10k damage. No joke. Heat Drive doing about 5,400 to the Resol here. Can Yuffie find a kill on her here, though? She's only about halfway health. Looks like Blinding Trinity actually finds the back line, dealing a good chunk of damage onto both Severo and Winter Luartha. He will proc that Courage in haste, though, so he is going to be able to take at least one more hit. What can Winter Luartha do? She's going to be less accurate versus the Yuffie with that Pierce Evasion. But I don't see a dodge. We'll see if this actually does damage. Here is the limit break. 9,000. Absolutely dumpsters Yuffie in one hit. Doesn't matter about the Pierce of Age. She apparently is accurate enough to seal that kill. And here comes the Severo. What is he going to go for? Prox the Knight's Blessing. And this is just an absolutely fantastic showcase here by Desire. Running the Mashri TMR on Severo. Very smart tech here. And here comes the Resol, going to kill the Balo. It is now down to a 3v1. Can Heal somehow manage to pull this off? Heat Drive is going to come out for 4,700, so it is now a 2v1. But he needs some time to buff and gain some AP. He's only got 22 at the moment. Not sure if Winter Luartha can find damage. He's only got 35 AP at the moment. And this is some interesting height ranges. Binding Javelin, though, is 8,500 from downtown. Looking like Steph Curry back here as Veiled Defiance comes through. For Heo, he's going to gain some AP, but can he close the gap and deal some damage before these two units take him out? I imagine Severo's going to do a good chunk. He's going to proc the Courage. Heo needs to hit one more time. It looks like Winter Luartha is going to go next here, though. She cannot get in range, so Masterful Melody is going to come out. Can Heo find a double kill? He's going to go next. I don't think he can, and Severo actually has Courage online. Unknown Traitor comes out, removes the haste. But it's not enough to kill anybody, and Severo should be able to clean this battle up. He is going to go next. 
And all right, guys, after about 30 seconds of waiting, this popped up on the screen. Um, I did get reached out to by Error 404. He did let me know that uh, Desire accidentally disconnected, but we have some rules in place for these DCs. And if we can, um, you know, with pretty much 100% certainty, declare a winner, uh, that we just go with that. He basically just reached out to me and told me, hey, I know Desire DC'd, but it was his win. Um, and as you can see in the turn order, it's very clear that uh, Desire was going to win this battle. Several was going to go next in the turn order. He had plenty of AP, and he only needed to deal one damage to the heal. So I very much assumed that this fight was over. So this is a 2-0 series win for Desire. We didn't get to see the final kill, but either way, GG and congratulations. Game number one of Spaghetti Western versus Friendship, Maverick versus Colgate. Colgate running a team we've seen him run a handful of times before, the mom and pop Leonis team along with King Bradley, as Maverick's gonna pop the Spirit of Wazette buff from his Glacial Flagbearer, who is alongside Cyrell and Rennell. The Poise buff coming up from Bradley, so he's got Courage, he's got more damage, as if he needed any more. And the Concentration buff coming up from Cyrell on her first turn gives agility to her and Rennell. Rennell is going to pop some Evasion up, Magic Attack Resist also allows her to remove Courage, just an absolutely fantastic buff. Mama Leon is going to go with the Bar Air Rora buff, though, is very, very smart. I will say going against two different win units, Bradley might be up against it, but if any Earth unit can handle it, it would be him. The zombie TMR, though, Halloween Ryru, trust master on Elda, so he's going to have to die twice. Curious as to see his AI. Will he use that before he pops his limit break? I'm not sure. But speaking of King Bradley, that TMR gets popped as by Glacella as the Zizabels are used, revitalized by Cyrell. Shadow Dance on Rennell, and she is ready to go. Basically, every good buff she has has now already been used. But here comes Helena, and I assume this is probably Time Mage based on her channeling a spell here, but it's possible that she could use Bar Aurora on Elda. It is Time Mage sub, so the guard haste onto Bradley. He is going to be very, very speedy at this point as Beacon of Reform comes out from Glacella, and we should finally be able to get some action here soon. One more turn, though. Kingpin's Cackled. We've seen this before. This is the Zazan Unkillable TMR from Bradley, so now he has 50 Earth Pen earth resistance penetration which means he should still be able to do good damage to these win units leona's barrier pops onto elda so now he has tons of hate he also has a barrier online and what is helena going for i imagine she's probably going to haste herself gloombound trinity will eat up that barrier on elda start a nice little chain but can anybody follow up with it cyrell cannot she cannot get in range to do that i imagine if she was able to chain she probably could kill off of that spear of sending though is 56 18 and removes re-raise and this is looking very good for maverick at this point with a 3v2 lead here but king bradley's gonna be able to find an aoe and calculated ren just absolutely dumpsters renell in one hit and i I will say that is half of Glacella's health, which is absolutely outstanding considering that I believe she has a barrier online right now. Disrupting Axe Throw from Cyrell does good damage, but this hasted up Bradley is going to lap here. He's going to be able to chain. This might be able to kill Glacella. Calculated Rend. Oh my goodness. This Earth unit just absolutely crushing the win units on the other side. Bar Aurora comes out again, but Bradley is going to go for a third time here, and this should be all but over here for Colgate. Game 1, getting the victory against the two win units, that is very, very impressive. Heading into game number two here, if you're Maverick, I think you have to be at least a little disappointed. I think you called the Bradley, but even with the two win units, it wasn't enough. So he goes with one of his old reliable teams, the Double Glacella comp. Glacella Flagbearer, Glacella Wazette, and the Zazan. Keenblade is going to come out from the OG Glacella. Zazan should be able to go next with all that CT up, and he's going to go Presence of the Dragon. So an interesting tech here. This might actually work really well with Zazan having so much movement. This is the Oberon TMR. We've tested this before. It basically nullifies haste for like one turn, but it might still work out well here. Bar Aurora is going to go up on the other team, but with Zazan having so much movement, I think Bradley will enter the fight before uh, haste really becomes a thing. Heon coming out from Elda does very little chip damage to the Zazan. As the King Bradley TMR on Flagbearer Glassy, she's ready to go, and Maverick is hoping to get a haste advantage compared to the other side. The War Maiden's Pride comes off of OG Glacella, so she's ready to go. It gives her like six different amazing things, but here comes King Bradley. Calculated Rend one-shots the Zazan, but it is just the Zazan. 
Pokemon, and that is the only thing that Maverick can look to fondly here, as not a ton of damage onto the Elda from Glacella here. Is this King Bradley just too much to handle for this other side? Cal calculated Ren actually tanked up decently well by the OG Glacella here, with all of those buffs she gives herself. Stunning Thrust destroys Elda with the elemental advantage, and hold on a second here, Dispelling Spear Flight is enough to remove that physical damage up that he puts himself puts on himself with that poise and Bart and Roro is going to be nice but I don't know man if they can proc courage on this next hit I don't think it's going to matter assault blade comes out from the Bradley not enough to kill OG glassy and wouldn't you know it she kind of looks like the MVP here spear of sending is enough to proc courage on Bradley does he get to lap no he does not surge strike is going to come out from OG Glacella, and this is a fantastic turnaround by Maverick in game two here Apparently, the uh, original Glassy looking even stronger than Flag Glassy into Earth. That is actually kind of crazy to think about. But Shining Conviction will take care of Mama Leonis, and we are headed to a Game 3. Heading into Game 3, guys, I do apologize. I forgot to put the little marker on Colgate's side after he won Game 1. But this is Game 3. Both teams have won a game to this point as Spirit of Wazette comes out from Glacial Flagbearer. So she's got that barrier. They're going to be very accurate. All that good stuff, and it looks like the same initial turn rotation coming up from Maverick, except he flipped sides of the map. I wonder if he did this on purpose, calling Colgate. As I look at Colgate's team, he flipped a little bit of the side of the map with his Bradley 2, baits him out before the Courage goes off. This could be pretty massive here for Maverick. He didn't, I don't think he ever used Poise. I don't think he got the opportunity. Bar Aurora is going to go off here, but Zazan did not drop in one hit. The Leonis Barrier here for Elda, and so it looks like Colgate opting to not go with the re-raise because there is re-raise to spell on the other side. So Momentum, the King Bradley TMR coming up from F Flag Bear Glassy. She has good range, but not quite enough range to reach there. As Leap Strike from Glassy, the OG one does about 2,500 damage, but Bradley is going to be out of AP soon enough. He's only got 29. Calculated Ren will land the kill on his Zazan, but he only has 5 AP at this moment. So man, 3v2 advantage versus the AP advantage. What is going to be the... Uh, the winner here we'll have to see so helena what does she go for she still goes for this bar aurora buff it's very good against the other team does catch all three now what can glassy go for triple piercer is actually soaked up very well by the elda who had that barrier online tanked that much better than last time void void piercer excuse me does 1600 damage but here comes glassy goes with the maiming slash so she goes with one of her slash attacks rather than the pierce hits all three drops healing power and you have to wonder is it still haste uh time age sub job i don't know but smile practice comes out from helena the Yuna tmr but that healing power down doing so much that being said it is a 3v1 and flag bear glassy has to put in so much work here she does a good chunk of damage but she does not proc the courage on bradley i take that back he never used his courage so that actually doesn't matter she needs to live oh my god she took almost no damage from that i don't know what maverick's build is here but that is insane maybe just a ridiculous amount of earth resistance as uh they never use the Zazan, the unkillable TMR. She reflexes Elda, who is probably the main source of damage right now, comparatively considering it's probably a ton of Earth Res. Bradley literally just puts Courage on himself as he is not able to do damage because he doesn't have AP. What can Glassy do with 40 of it? Triple Cross comes out, and that Courage doesn't matter if Glacella, Glacella removes it. So now it is the old mom and pop shop versus the leader of Wazette here. Who is going to win it? I had to put my money on somebody, it'd probably be this glassy, but here comes Pummel from Elda, that's a good chunk of damage. Can he do anything to survive? Yes, he can, glassy doesn't have enough AP, but I don't think Elda does either, which is going to be super awkward. Oh man, the Bar Aurora, I don't think it's going to matter. She should be able to find this kill. Dispelling Spearflight actually goes for Helena though. But looking at the turn order, Elda's going to get one turn. It's going to get reflexed anyway. You have to wonder if those two reflexes were the difference. Would he have been able to kill Glassy? I'm not certain, but it very well might have been. But sometimes you need a little luck. Tough to say. But Maverick and the Spaghetti Western pick up the Game 3 victory. All right, guys. With seven weeks in the books, these are how the Heinler standings break down. And in first place, we've got JB79 of the Paranoid Androids. No longer undefeated, though. There is one blemish on his record, and that is due to Spike, my guild leader, coach of Bebop's crew, with that impressive 2-0 series victory. Regardless, JB79 still all alone in first place. Already clinched playoffs last week. And with another win, I think he would clinch a top three seed and a first round by in the playoffs. 
I'm sure he has a good chance of getting that done. Turnbar of the Fire Ferrets in second place with a win this week. Puts them all alone in second place with 16 points, no longer having to rely on a tiebreaker. Crimson Lease of the Triumphant Trailblazers, though, continues that hot streak. Five weeks in a row is very, very impressive. Unhindered, Coach of Ignite the Storm, and Maverick of Spaghetti Western, both with 13. They make our fourth and fifth seed. And I will talk about more about the playoffs, like I said in that video next week. But if the, the season ended right now, those two teams would actually play against each other. So that will be very, very interesting. Unhindered does have the head-to-head -head record. So currently he's holding down that fourth spot. But Spike of Bebop's crew, hot on their tails at the moment with 12 points. And he is trying to make that top five. Desire of Team Big Mouth, three, actually four points out of the top five. So he is going to need some help from some of those teams up at the top getting a loss or two but man he is trying to make that late push to try and make the playoffs starting out 0-4 is such a brutal hole to dig yourself into but three weeks in a row if anybody could pull it off it'd probably be him Colgate of Friendship with eight points probably too far behind to make that top five but I know he's going to keep trying Lucian Rams of Lone Shadow with seven and Error 404 of Ashes to Crashes with three overall this Division has just been a hell of a lot of fun to watch. Um, I think there's been a lot of competitive matches, a couple of little surprises, I think, throughout the season, and uh, it's been a good time. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, there will be no uh, weekly vids next week, just the one simple bit of me talking about the playoff structure, but we will be back for week eight, two weeks from now, and I'm excited for that final playoff push to see who makes it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.